Gina, one of the two women lucky enough to stand by Rachel's side as her maid of honor today. I knew Rachel and I would be great friends from the moment we met, when we were at a bar with a mutual friend, and Rachel eyed me suspiciously across the way, because I was hogging our friend's attention. That is not an exaggeration. But honestly, as soon as Rachel and I crossed paths again, we clicked instantly. We like to refer to each other as ships passing in the night, because even though we met in Chicago, we both went to Michigan, and we had the exact same majors. But actually, I met Joe first back in college, where we sang karaoke together at the Heidelberg, and I do have photo evidence to prove it. I like to think that since we missed out on being college friends, fate insisted that Rachel and I fly again, and here we are. To say that Rachel and I have a lot in common is an understatement. We both have seen every episode of Friends at least 10 times. And quick side note, I was really pleased to hear that that's what we were walking into tonight. <laughs> we both like to spend the day before going to a nice meal, reading the restaurant menu over and over again, and making ourselves nervous that we're not going to order the right food. <laughs> when we do go to restaurants together, like when we go to Fondue at Gay House Cafe, we like to announce the meat or vegetable that we will dip in each sauce, and then we compare notes on the best combination. <laughs> We both love life with an intensity that I think makes us endearing, but also gives us massive anxiety because we care so much about doing things well and fitting as many experiences into our lives as we can and being the best friends to our large group of friends that we can be. The only things we really disagree on are uns, a breed for onions. I love them, Rachel hates them with the fire of a thousand suns, and the best character on Friends. I'm a diehard Chandler fan, and Rachel loves them. Oh, I'm sorry, I just skipped a line. Rachel will defend Ross until the cows come home. In short, I am so fortunate to have this incredibly fun, kind, smart, passionate, and generous woman in my life. I think of Rachel not just as a lifelong friend, but a sister. She is family to me. Naturally, this means I have very high expectations for any man that Rachel would date. When Rachel met Joe, I remembered that he was a fun and nice guy, but I needed to see him again before I could give my stamp of approval. One of the first times we reunited was watching a Michigan basketball game. I knew then that he was someone special because he cheered as intensely as I required from my Michigan fans, but then he stalked the bar just like Papa Lang. But most importantly, he was so kind and attentive to Rachel. It was clear from then on that Joe appreciated Rachel for who she was and loved her for it. Joe is kind and honest. He's funny and patient. Rachel and I have often joked that we're really lucky to have found men who appreciate us, despite the fact that we can be a little more demanding than most people. And this wouldn't be a speech for me to Rachel about a friend's quote, so here's one that Chandler said to Monica that sums who we are of perfectly. <clears throat> you're not easy going, but you're passionate, and that's good. And when you get upset about the little things, I think that I'm pretty good about making you feel better about that, and that's good too. So they can say you're high maintenance, but it's okay, because I like maintaining you. Thank you, Joe, for being so sweet and doing such a good job maintaining my friend. found someone who loves her with all his heart and who she loves just as much. It's been so wonderful to watch the two of you grow together. You balance each other out perfectly. Joe's calmness evens Rachel out, and Rachel's energy brings out Joe's fun-loving spirit. Good news, Joe. We're going to be spending a lot of time together because Rachel and I have already planned out our entire lives, and it owns, involves us owning a timeshare together on the beach. I'm thinking Traverse City, but I might let you in because you just married my sister friend, so now you're my family too. So let's raise a glass to Rachel and Joe to the Cronks. This is the first uh, major speech I've given, so <laughs> please bear with me. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <clears throat> Rachel, we met under a large tree on El Bell Field on the first day of marching band practice at U of M. It was hot, and we were, struck up a conversation with each other but we don't recall who started it. Years later, we revealed to each other that we started conversation because we thought the other one was an antisocial loner. <laughs> 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 
and needed a friend. <laughs> well, as I look around today, Rachel is far from an antisocial loner. You are loved by so many people, and for good reason. Oh, God. <laughs> you make lasting connections. You never turn your back on a friend. You are fiercely loyal, and no matter where you go, fun will follow. I hope everybody heard that. <laughs> Who else would sing crazed songs and make panda noises at the bus stop late at night to keep us safe? <laughs> um, there is also that time we laughed so hard while playing Candyland at the OSU family's house. We could barely breathe. Camp, uh, crimping your hair to sweetness bef before an 80s party. The times when we cried about boys or school or anything in between. That's why no matter where we live or how, lo how long we're apart, I know we'll be best friends forever, for life. Joe is a lucky guy to share his life with you. You both complement each other so well. He is the calm seas to your passionate storm. <laughs> and unlike the foot at Bursley, I can see that the foundation you're building together will be one to last a lifetime. <laughs> I love you, Rach, and I love you too, Joe. You guys are going places. <laughs> and I can't wait to see what happens next. Toast. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah. Joe, I'm a man of few words, so I'll keep it pretty short. But I do think it's important to say thank you to a few people. Um, Rachel, first off, thank you for having the vision for such a beautiful day today and surrounding yourself with people that could help you carry it out. Um, I'm sure it was stressful, even possibly now, but um, I just I want you to know that you have so many happy people here, and it wouldn't be possible without you, so thank you. Yeah, let's clap it up for Rachel. She looks great too, by the way. I, I meant to say that. Um, second, I'd like to thank Lisa and Greg. Uh, I just met you guys on Thursday, um, but I can tell that the pride that you must feel today and every day when you look at Rachel, um, it, it's got to be overwhelming. Uh, I have myself a daughter and another one on the way, and if they turn out half as radiant or half as sharp as her, I'll know I've done my job. So thank you guys for being great parents. And big Mo, Mo and Joe, man. Maureen Cronk, Joe Cronk, thank you guys. Uh, I have a small confession. Joe, uh, I actually stole my first beer from you, so. Uh, <laughs> so thank you, and I'm sorry. I'll get you another one. And Maureen, you were like a second mom to all of us, to all of our friends, Jim, Kyle, the list goes on and on. I felt like every time that we went to your house, um, we knew it was a safe place. We knew we could just be boys. And growing up, uh, to me, that's one of the, the best things about you guys. Is I always felt comfortable. I'm so grateful for your patience. I'm sure we tested it many, many nights playing basketball and doing all kinds of stupid stuff, but uh, I really love you guys. I appreciate everything, and I hope today's what you hope it to be. All right. Uh, so thank you, guys. And finally, Joe. Man, Joe, I appreciate today. I feel like meeting all your friends, um, you, any one of these guys could have been your best man. And uh, I just feel very honored. I want you to know that. And uh, I can tell we've come a long way from uh, our high school days of setting up trash cans in the, in the drive and then hitting them with our parents' cars. So, <laughs> sorry, Mom. I know. It's, Mo, I, that's why you had scratches in your van. 
not proud of it. A little proud of it, yeah. <laughs> but no, honestly, um, you know, Joe, you're like, you've been like a brother. I love you. I'm so proud of you and happy for you. I can tell you, you have a true moral compass um, that will guide you. And, uh, you know, you have a work ethic that your parents are proud of. I spoke to Joe on Thursday about that. And now you have a wife that's smarter than you and more beautiful. <laughs> so don't screw it up. So with that being said, I just want to say congratulations on behalf of the, the wedding party and uh, why don't we raise our glasses. May you carefully use the words always and never and may your love for each other grow deeper forever and ever. Cheers. Thank you. If I talk too loud, I apologize. I'm not going to talk long. That happens to be other people in our family's problem. But uh, Ryan, you did a nice speech, by the way. It was great. Um, actually, I'm coming in as K-Rod, the closer, Mike Murray, wherever you are. Uh, I'm going to close this thing out. Um, thank you all. For, oh, I've got to keep the head here. Thank you all for uh, coming tonight. We appreciate it. You know, um, we were talking, you've heard already today, Rachel loves the movie Father of the Bride. We talked about it and talked about it. But this morning, you get up, we're in the um, hotel room, and I open the drapes, and I look outside, and I open, only opened up the heavy drapes. I didn't open up the thin ones. And when I looked at the thin drapes, I go, oh, crap, it snowed out last night. It looked like, it looked like snow. <laughs> and I only had two beers last night. Uh, that's, uh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's Matt. Two beers. That's all I had, right? right. Anyway, um, so I was I wasn't I wasn't in tax or anything when we went. <laughs> but uh, I looked at this and I go, Oh my God, it's snowing! And then I could have swore I heard the sound of a bunch of swans flying by, and I go, Oh crap! Am I turning into Steve Martin here? What's going What's going on? So anyway, I, I got to thinking about it, and I say, Well, you know, in the movie. Um, Steve Martin's daughter, who I can't think of her name right now because it's, you know, kind of big night. Uh, but uh, she, marries, she marries this terrific guy, and he's just, like, fantastic. And I go, well, Joe's pretty fantastic. So, I mean, that's, uh, this is following the movie script. And he comes from a great family. And I said, these guys are just, the Crocs are just fantastic people. And I said, okay, uh, this is going, uh, you know, kind of like the movie. I said, something's, I can't be Steve Martin. No, I'm Greg Lang, you know. So, anyway, <laughs> um, I kind of... Uh, looked at it and I said, okay, what can change this? And I said, okay, wait a minute, I haven't been arrested for stealing hot dog buns and got put in a slammer this week, so I'm good there. And then I remembered that uh, Father of the Bride, Rachel, didn't they have a sequel, Father of the Bride 2? And in that one, um, Steve Martin's wife gets knocked up. Uh, so that's, that, that's, that's, that, that, that's not happening. That's not happening. So. Uh, so we're, 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 we're definitely, uh, we're not, definitely not Steve Martin. Uh, but we're, not, we're not doing the Father Bride too, but there's, or what? But uh, there's, there's one big difference is Steve Martin loved his daughter like 10 times over. I love you 1,000 times over. So uh, here's a salute to you and Joe. Best wishes. God bless you guys. And salute everybody. Salute everybody. And I'm done. I got the easy part. Okay, everybody, just uh, bow your head for a minute, for a second. Bless us, O Lord. These thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>